my fellow collectors and welcome to Long's Toys. Today we are taking a look at BB25CL Stegosaur from the Beast Box line from 52 Toys. So I've never had a Beast Box before. This is definitely my first one. Uh, the line's been highly recommended by a few of my friends who've gotten a couple of these. So I decided, hey, let's go ahead and try one out. So I saw this Stegosaurus here on uh, HLJ and I decided to go for it. Right off the bat, I love the adorable little Stegosaurus here on the front. I think that's absolutely fantastic. The artwork on the box is actually pretty cool. You have a giant robotic Stegosaur over here, which is, of course, the toy that is inside. And it's just showing you that it does transform into a box, because that's what these do. And then over here, we have another look at the Stegosaur form. And then over here on the back, we have a look at the box form. And then there's just a bunch of stuff over here that I can't read. So there we go. So pretty cool packaging. I'm going to go ahead and get them out of the box and we'll take a closer look. So here is Stegosaur out of the packaging. We'll take a closer look at him in a moment. You do also get this little uh, clear box carrying case, whatever you want to call it, storage case. It's pretty cool. I like this. I'm really glad that this was included. I was afraid I was going to have to buy these separately. So you can just go ahead and store them in box mode in this. Just flips down like so, and it has these little spots on the side, so if you have multiples of these, you can connect them together. It also has these little spots down here, which would connect to these little spots up here. So if you have a bunch of these, you could make like a whole wall of these, which I think is actually really cool. I think that's a neat idea for storing them. Uh, real quick, before we dive into Stegosaur, there is a ton of stuff that comes in here. Uh, Paperwork-wise, of course, there are the instructions, which I don't have here, uh, but you get a little trading card. So here is Stegosaur with his little number. Here's a picture of him in box mode. Got the Beast Box logo down here, which I really like that logo. I think that's really cool. And then over here on the back, you have kind of like some tech specs, I'm assuming. Picture of an actual Stegosaur. It's got a little QR code. So pretty cool. Little trading card there for you. Uh, you do also have this clear piece of plastic. And the instructions here say to kind of fold it in half. And then they want you to put it in the back of the box. And I'm assuming this kind of acts almost as like a little spring to help you get it out of there should it ever get stuck. I'm not going to do it. I tried it out and it seems like he fits in there perfectly fine. Uh, but it's just kind of like a little thing they give you, I'm assuming. So like when you push it in and close it up, it stays folded up. But then when you open it up, it's kind of like a natural spring to just kind of help you get them out of there, which I think is kind of cool. And then it shows you how to connect the boxes if you do get multiples of these, which is pretty cool. So I'm going to put that off to the side. And then we get two of these catalogs, uh, just kind of showing you other ones that are available. So I'm going to zoom out here, and I just thought it would be fun to take a brief look at these, because there are a lot. I know I'm late to the party with these, and there are a ton. We've got a hippo, we got a uh, rhinosodon. I'm assuming that's some kind of whale-type dinosaur. Got some penguins, got an actual rhino over here. I really like this triceratops, I might have to try to track him down. You got a panda piloting a larger panda can't go wrong with that got a spider got some gorillas got a trio of what maybe are raptors down there just says dino so or actually says dio uh, i got this really cool looking parrot i love the colors on that that's really bright and really fun and then on the back here it just kind of gives you this little map of them all in like their little ecosystems it almost kind of looks like it's a zoo because there's like an entryway down here so that's just kind of a cool little pick um we also have this larger one, which has even more, and some larger pictures as well. So let me go ahead and open this up. This is double-sided. But some of them overlap, like you can see the dinos and the parrots again over there. Got a crab, got an alligator, got that panda again, got the spider, got a lobster, which looks pretty cool. Got some more dinos down here. We got the stegosaur in various colors. That praying mantis really looks cool, too. Oh, I like the black and red Stegosaurus. That's pretty cool. So there's a lot of stuff going on with these. Uh, over here on the back, they even have some licensing stuff. They got a Predator. They got Aliens. They got these over here where it's two boxes that uh, combine to form a robot. So they got a lot of stuff going on with these. Very, very cool. I think that's Getter Robo there. I don't know what Eunice is, but he's looking pretty cool as well. I know they did... Um, I think it was the same company. I think it was 52 Toys. They did like... Uh, two Ninja Turtles that also could combine to form the Party Wagon, which is amazing. And I've kind of wanted for a while, but I can't seem to find any more for a decent price. Like I said, I think I kind of missed the boat on these. So I can only imagine what aftermarket prices would be at this point. Um, but I like these things. I love when they include these little catalogs just to show you some other stuff that's available. So might have to track down a few more of these. But there's a lot of stuff going on. Like I said, I know I'm late to the party but definitely some really cool ones of these going on. 
So here is Stegosaur out of the packaging. I really love the color scheme for this guy. I think the orange really works with kind of the deep forest green. I think that looks really good. You have really nice translucent eyes there. You can open the mouth really far, like ridiculously far, and you can close it completely. Uh, you can move the head up and down there. There's a joint. You can kind of move it a little bit side to side, but not really much. You can kind of turn it side to side, though. Uh, otherwise, not a ton of articulation. You have the little guns here, which have a hinge. You can go up and down. They can spin side to side. You have the little front legs here, which are one solid piece. You have a little ball joint up there, so they can move around. The back legs have a tiny bit more articulation. You have the same ball joint there, but then you do have a hinge as well, kind of in the, we'll call it, knee. Uh, you can move that around. Uh, the tail has limited articulation. It can kind of waggle side to side, and when it does that, it kind of moves the back legs as well. I don't know if that's intended or if it's just because of how they're connected. Um, I wish it could swing a little bit more side to side. I mean, stegosauruses usually swing their tails around a lot, so I wish that could move a little bit more, but that's not a big deal. Uh, you do have some movement here. You can kind of bring this up, down. You have a movement there as well. You have a hinge back here, and then you kind of have a little bit of hinge movement back there as well. Now, he does come a little mistransformed in the packaging. You have to flip out some of the spikes, but otherwise he's pretty much ready to go. But yeah, he's really cool. Uh, a little bit of paint applications. Got some here on the head, on the sides of the neck, around here on the body, and then a decent amount here on the tail. Got some nice red around. But I would say he mostly makes up for the color with like the translucent orange pieces. Does, definitely has a few paint applications, but not a ton. But he doesn't really need it, honestly. I feel like the translucent plastic really stands out and kind of makes up for, I don't want to say lack of paint applications, because it's not really a lack, but the fewer amount of paint applications, we'll say. But yeah, he's really fun. I like him a lot. He's a big, hefty boy, definitely a pretty good Stegosaurus. I feel like he's got decent articulation. Um, not really much more I would ask for. Like I said, maybe just having the tail able to wag a little bit further side to side. But that's about it. He's pretty great. Let's go ahead, let's get into the box transformation. So the box transformation, really not too difficult. We're going to start by just going ahead and kind of folding down a lot of the uh, Stegosaurus spikes. This section is going to lift up, and then you're just going to drop all of these down. And then that's just going to close up over top. This section here lifts out just enough so that you can kind of spin this panel around. Now I will say, for whatever reason, this one on mine is really tight. You can still move it around, and I feel like it's loosening with time. Um, but for whatever reason, that one's really tight. This one's not too bad. This one you kind of pop out, and then you can swivel it around pretty easily. So that just rotates there and folds back in like that. Uh, you're going to come to the little legs and kind of push them up like so. And then you can kind of bring these around, and you can see how there's kind of four little tabs right here. This is going to come around, and you can see that there's a little tab slot right there. So this is going to come around and just peg on like that. And then you can, um, I think you have to, no, these will come down like this. And then this will come around, and it's the same situation where there's a little tab slot right there. And that's just going to peg on right on there. So bring these in and tab those in. So all the legs just store underneath exactly like that. So next up, we are going to uh, disconnect this. There's kind of a little connection spot here in the neck. Well, first we have to, I guess we bring these down first to get them out of the way. So that comes down like that. And then you're able to grab a hold of these pieces and flip them down. You can see that there was a little tab spot right there and a tab right there. So you have to untab those and swing those down. And then you can go ahead and disconnect the neck which can be a little easier said than done. There we go. So you can see the clip right there that just clipped onto that little bar right there. So now we're going to go ahead and grab this whole section, and you can see that there is a little peg here that'll slide in this channel. And that's so... Oh, you know what? I think I have to unpeg the legs. I did that a little too early because this has to be able to slide down like that. So that way you can fold in the stego head like this, and then this can... Let me make sure this is all the way in as it's supposed to be. Do I have to undo all the legs? I might I might have jumped the gun on the legs. 
Yeah, there we go. Because <laughs> you need that clearance so you can get the stego head all the way in like that. I still don't know if I have that all the way in correctly. There we go. That'll go all the way in so that this piece is straight down. Then you can go ahead, slide that back up. Then you're going to push these pieces down like so. And then you're going to pop this in here and you can see that there is a little tab spot right there and a little tab right there. So this is going to come up and go like that. And then we can go ahead and put the legs back on. So I just jumped the gun a little early on the legs, but they will eventually tab back in there like that. So at this point, you're going to bring these all the way down like so. You're going to take the tail, pull this all the way out if it's not already. You can kind of see how it, it kind of moves around. I wish that kind of snapped into place one way or the other or really in both configurations, but it doesn't. It's a little loose. Kind of my only complaint about that. Uh, but you'll go ahead and pop these apart. There's a little tab here that you have to push inside like that. And then you're going to bring this all the way out so that you can bring this fold it out like that so you can see the hinge right there. You're going to bring the tail down and all the way around. Make sure that that is correct. Where is the little channel? I think it's right there. So basically you can see that there is a tiny little spot right there and that's where this little spot's going to go into. So you just have to make sure you have the right angles. And there you go. And then this is going to come around and this has a little peg right here, which is going to peg in right there. So make sure that that all lines up correctly. There you go. And then these are going to fold in and there's a little tab right here, which is going to tab in right there. And so that'll just fold up. And then the very last step, make sure the guns are all the way down and then you just fold them to the side. And there we go. That is the box mode. I feel like it's pretty packed in there, really nice and tight really works. We can go ahead and bring our little storage box back in and he just slides right inside. If you're having trouble getting him in, it's most likely because you forgot to fold this little peg in because I did that at first. But he just slides in there and you can see it's really not too snug. You can kind of get him out with relative ease. But then you can just go ahead and close that up and then there you go. You got your little beast box in box mode and your little storage crate. And I think that's great. I'm kind of uh, looking forward to getting a few of these so I can connect these together because I think that'd be really cool to just have like a nice stack of these all connected together with the various beast boxes inside. But yeah, it works really well. I think that's pretty cool. Definitely fits in there pretty snazzy. I like it a lot. So yeah, I think this guy's pretty great. I definitely recommend checking out the Beast Box line. I had heard some things before that they were a little brittle or easily prone to breakage, and that's kind of what made me stay away from the line for so long. But having this one in hand, I think he's perfectly sturdy. I don't really see any problems with breakage or anything that looks potentially like it's brittle or anything like that. So yeah, I'm happy to report that this guy's a lot of fun. I thought it was pretty reasonably priced. I think it was like $20, $25 on HLJ before shipping, which I think is pretty fine. Uh, again, everything feels sturdy. I can't say that anything feels like it's prone to breaking. Maybe these panels here, just to be a little careful, but I don't think they're going to snap or anything. I just feel like if you try to use excessive force on them, you could probably break them off. But as long as you're careful, I think everything's going to be fine. I really like the plastic case. I think that's really fun. I like that they have the connectivity, so that if you have a bunch of them, you can connect them all together. I think that's really fun. Yeah, all in all, I think this guy is a good time. You know, fun little transformation. The box mode looks great. The dino mode looks great. Yeah, I don't really have too much to complain about. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Please like, share, and subscribe. Hope you guys enjoy the video. And as always, thanks so much for watching.